So relative risk of a drug use for an adverse drug event in a particular patient group using an example of GI bleeding of SSRI as part of antidepressants. Okay, so this is PECO again. So SSRI, the side effects of SSRI, GI bleeding is well established because SSRI affects the function of platelets in the blood. So patients receiving SSRI are generally more likely to have GI bleeding in the general population, but it's, it's unknown among CKD population. So among patients with CKD, so comparing SSRI and no SSRI on the first instance of GI bleeding hospitalization. So this is the CKD cohort again, and this pink suggests antidepressant prescription. But then I had difficulty again. So I wondered between what is comparison? Comparison between people or comparison between periods. So if I chose people, I will compare these three people who are prescribed antidepressants anytime, even for a short period, and the rest of the people, I mean two. So if the outcome was cancer incidence, probably I should choose this option because once a patient is exposed to a drug, they may be at risk for cancer later. But in the case of GI bleeding, so generally we can expect that the risk of GI bleeding is increased only at the time of drug prescription. So I should have compared periods. So one patient may have both periods with and without antidepressants. So by which I mean I compared periods with and without SSRI, so pink versus green. That's my decision. But then Ian came to me and suggested one advice. So generally, Ian is very generous about student decisions. But it seems that this time only, Ian was very strict, I mean, had strong opinion about this point. I should have excluded these prevalent users at the time of cohort entry because it's well known that in pharmacoepidemiology, prevalent users could bias the results. And in this example, they say, he says that discrepancy between RCTs and observational studies on hormonal replacement therapy can be explained by prevalent users who have survived without side effects of the drug. By which I mean, this patient it was using our own antidepressants because they didn't have G GI bleeding before. So that even if I follow them up later, he's unlikely to have GI bleeding. So this patient could bias the association between SSRI and GI bleeding. So according to his advice, I decided to exclude this patient and conducted incident user study design. And the incidence rate of first year bleeding was 4.7 during green period and 9.4 during pink period. And if I take conducted survival analysis by Poisson regression analysis, or you could use Cox regression analysis, this was 2.04. And I also adjusted time-dependent confounding factor like NSAIDs use or warfarin or aspirin or uh, anti, uh, anti acid drugs to protect stomach. And this was 1.79. So I interpret this as during period with SSRI, the risk, relative risk of GI bleeding was 1.79. And I repeated the analysis in the CKD, non CKD cohort I established during my first paper. And this was 3.0 and 5.7. And unadjusted rate ratio was 1.98 and 1.66. So how to interpret the result? So I expected that if uh, antidepressant or SSRI is really risky in patients with CKD, 
this should be three or uh, four. But the reality was it was slightly different, but not very different. So of course, it's good for patients and doctors, but bad news for me because it's kind of boring. So generally, I mean, medical journals like sensational news. And by obtaining this kind of boring result, my result is unlikely to be accepted by high impact journals. So I further divided this patient group into three according to the level of the kidney function. But the result was very similar. So there is no big difference of relative risk according to the level of kidney function. And I conducted a test for interaction. So to, to test whether this relative risk is different between the kidney patient group, kidney function. But there is no <laughs> evidence. And I further divided them into low dose and high dose, expecting that doctors may prescribe low dose of SSRI for patients with lower kidney function. That's kind of confounding. So I separated, I mean, stratified according to those. But you, you can see that it's very difficult to interpret these results because of large confidence intervals, because each group became very small. So in the end, it seemed to me that relative risk was not very different kind of boring result. But I was kind of confused. So is this SSRI accepted in CKD? And my supervisor said again, in a sense, yes. But I should look at absolute risks to discuss about the appropriateness of use of drug in a particular population. So this went to my final Number five, absolute risk increase or excess risk of a drug use for an adverse drug event in a particular patient group. Do you have any questions so far? Comparison. Okay. So case only data. That's that's good good question. And that's related to Ian's talk in the afternoon. I was attracted by case only design, but and it's true that previous studies, previous researchers tackled this research question. I mean GI bleeding and antidepressants and GI bleeding by case only design, but so I mean. The condition required for case-only design is that, especially self-controlled case series, the condition, one of the conditions is that the outcome incidence shouldn't change the subsequent exposure probability. And it's now, in 2016 or 17, it's already known that GI bleed, I mean, SSRI's risk for GI bleeding it's highly possible that once doctors find GI bleeding, they may stop antidepressants or SSRI and never prescribe it again. So it harms the requirement or condition to use case-only design. Yeah, so that, that's the main reason that I couldn't use self-controlled case series design. So still I had the option to use uh, case crossover design because case crossover design the requirement, the condition is not required, as, as Ian will talk later. <laughs> but I mean, I didn't use this time. Yeah. And also, the, I wanted, I needed to estimate incidence rate, absolute incidence rate. And in self-controlled case series or case-only design, the absolute incidence cannot be 
estimated. Yeah. Because I mean, you only include patients with outcome. Yeah, so yeah, that is, yeah. So to, to, to estimate relative risk, I mean, yeah, could be an option, but I mean, yeah, I didn't use that. Is right. Yeah. My explanation good. <laughs> According to Ian. <laughs> okay, so absolute risk increase of a drug. Uh, 